Hi, ladies of the greatness of divine. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Leah Vander Linden, and I am so excited and honored to say that I got to meet Kim or cross paths with Kim virtually almost for a year now through our beautiful friend Nikisha. And we just interacted and just instantly hit it off. And I am very grateful for our friendship and for her having me here. What's up, Kim? So to tell you a little bit about me, um, I, I do all kinds of things when it's centered around helping a woman heal so that she learns that her life is not just a memory she's trying to get past, but her life is a life worth living. So we do that through all kinds of things. I have a master's in Reiki that I love to use with every session with a client. I also do um, inner child healing, shadow work, tarot cards, crystal therapy, um, and the list goes on and on and on, but you name it, if there is a way to help a woman heal, that's what I do. So one of my favorite ways also is by teaching my clients simple meditations that can help them manage everyday life. And um, it is just something that I believe should be incorporated to our practices. Hi, Tamika, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Um, and so I want to make it as simple as possible. So how today is going to look is I'm going to start off first with telling you some of the benefits and what it can increase and what it can decrease in your life. We're going to go over some very like unique and basic ways of meditation. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite, very simple forms of meditation, which is called um, counting meditation. However, a lot of people like to call it a pocket meditation because it's something so simple you want to kind of keep in your pocket because you can do it at work, you can do it in your car, um, you can do it when your kids are working your nerves, you can just do it anywhere and people don't know. Um, so that's what I'm going to teach you at the very end. So we'll go ahead and dive in. So have you ladies, I want, regardless if you guys hop on later because I know it's a Saturday and we're, we all have busy lives and we're probably doing stuff, or if you're in here um, right now with me, if you want to just act like we're interactive, it just helps the flow keep going and it lets me be able to answer your questions later too. So we're going to start with a simple question is, have you guys ever meditated before? And I know Kim has, but have you guys ever meditated before? And if so, what kind of meditation did you do? Was it yoga? Was it breath meditation? Um, what kind was it? So why you guys are hopping that a popping those in there, I'll go ahead and get started on the benefits. So as you guys know, there is a ton of benefits to meditating, right? And I want to go over some of my favorite ones. However, I know I can't cover them all in one segment, but these are the ones that mean the most to me. And Kim said, yes, it was awesome with you. <laughs> Love you, Kim. Um, that's my wing girl. It's my wing girl. All right, so it helps with having positive emotions and creating this response system within you that when you go to respond to something, you're responding in a positive manner because your brain had a chance to settle through your meditation before it responded, right? Because most of the time when we respond, we respond in fear or we respond with our limiting beliefs that we don't even know are still in there. So this is a good one to help with positive emotions. It, uh, it helps with compassion. It helps with being more understanding, less irritability, um, your immune function and immune support. It is crazy what it does for your immune system. Even having your kids meditating, especially because school's getting ready to start for most of our kiddos, right? Even doing that as a family and letting your kids learn about meditation, even if it's five minutes that you guys do it on the way to school or whatever, right? that will help their immune system too. And it will also help their emotions with everything they're going through. It helps with concentration. So if you struggle with um, things like I do or pe people that are close to me do, like being able to focus sometimes or concentrate or comprehend, meditation is incredible for helping you be able to concentrate um, and give you that ability to focus and have that sharp you know, response. Um, it also helps with intuition and receiving divine messages and receiving more communication with God because you actually give him a space to be able to talk to you. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining us. Um, what it helps decrease is it helps decrease anxiety. It helps lower blood pressure, your heart rate. 
It helps with stress management, pain management in your body, feeling lonely, feeling like, why me? We all go through that sometimes, right? Helps with depression and the feeling of overwhelm. Um, so it's incredible all the things that it can do. And that's not even half of what it can do. But that's just some of my favorites. So we'll go ahead and keep on going there. Oh, and it also helps with, um, I don't know if I said that, with blood pressure. Okay. So as you know that when you guys tune in, does anybody watch Super Soul Sunday? I love it. Most of the time when we tune in to Super Soul Sunday or we tune in to Brene Brown or someone that's one of our favorite speakers, right? What most of the time do they give credit to for so much joy in their life? Most of the time it's gratitude and meditation. <laughs> and so, so many people give credit to it and everybody wonders why. What helps with blood pressure? Meditation. Um, meditation helps with it. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? So it helps lower it um, because it also helps lower those stress levels. And it also helps with your heart rate and memory. So, yeah, it's just amazing because our bodies, our bodies absorb emotion almost like a sponge. And when your body has a ton of emotions in it that have nowhere to go, it tends to always be in this fight or flight stress response without us even realizing it, which does increase our blood pressure, which does make our heart rate go through the roof and all these other things we talked about earlier. So when you do meditation and when you guys are doing spiritual work and learning all these incredible things you're learning here today, right? And throughout this week, you'll see that there are also forms of meditation. And when you do those and you give those emotions somewhere to go and somewhere to release, then you start having these results that also help your health. So it's crazy what healing those emotions, how they can heal your body and heal your spirit. So anyway, so many people credit their inner peace and mental state for being transformed because they simply meditate and it helps them be more mindful. And so many people have written books and do all these things when they meditate because they get these channeled messages from God. It's because we're going like 50,000 miles an hour every day, all day, that we don't slow down most of the time and just listen to our creator talk to us. However, when you meditate, it allows you to be able to do just that. So what does being mindful and doing all that really have to do with you or what does it really mean? Well, basically what it means is that it's like exercise. It's like yoga almost for the brain so that you can physically become more spiritually fit and become more aware in all aspects of your life. And it allows you to be able to healthy, healthfully release those emotions. So when you first start meditating, one of the most important things you can do is just set yourself up for success. So I always say that when you're getting ready to do anything new for you, there's a part of you that without even realizing it is going to try to fight your butt. It's going to try to <laughs> make you distracted. It's going to try to make the phone ring when you're getting ready to get started. It's going to try to interfere because it's afraid because it's something new. So just set yourself up for success so that you just Get that little inner voice to just be quiet for a moment, okay? So you give it something else to do. You give that inner voice a job. And its job is going to be to set yourself up for success by setting your space up. So you want to be somewhere that's minimal distractions. Sometimes, and for some people, that place is the car, you know, um, or the restroom, or it's in your room, or it's outside. It doesn't matter. It's your experience and your spiritual time. So you're going to want to find a place that has minimal distractions. If you do want your phone to have meditation on it, I mean, uh, meditation music or guided meditation or anything like that, just make sure that all the distractions are off. There's nothing worse than being in the moment. And then all of a sudden you hear a ding and your, your inner girl is like, oh, who sent me a message on Facebook? And then there goes that whole meditation, right? So turn those notifications off. If you want to go outside and be outside at a park or wherever, just try to have your headphones with you so that if there is a dog outside or a child, it doesn't distract you and you can just keep on concentrating. 
wear some clothes that are comfortable for you so that if you decide, if your spirit says, you know what, I want to do this meditation way longer than five minutes, then you're comfortable sitting in those and it's not something that's irritating you. Um, the car is so peaceful. I love doing things in the car spiritually, listening to my audiobooks, listening to my favorite song and, you know, dance and I ain't gonna lie right now. It's been why I'm in great <laughs> till they gotta be great. <laughs> but I love singing in the car. I love doing spiritual things in the car in general. And Kim said, I sit in the car 20 minutes before going in the house. Yeah, I do the same thing because when you get right, the whole house gets right. I have so many people come to me and ask me, can you help heal my child? Because Kim knows I worked for 17 years professionally with, with children and as well as adults um, and helping them through trauma and depression and different things. And people will come to me and they'll say, can you help my kid? And I say, can I help you first? Because if you heal the child, if you heal the mother, you heal the child. So this is why inner peace and your inner peace is so important. And it really is your guide to being great with the divine, because the more inner peace you have, the more peace your family will have. It really is true. Um, I love that, Kim. So yeah, you're going to wear clothes that are comfortable since you're going to be sitting there. This is one of my best tips because it is so true. When you first start meditating, especially if you decide to do it like where you're sitting um, in a lotus position or however you want to do it, your body might start saying, hey, girl, this is your back talking to your boo and I'm hurting. <laughs> this is your arm and I'm hurting. So what you want to do is stretch and do some stretches before you sit so that your body doesn't start trying to ache in the middle of you meditating and then you get distracted. Put some pillows behind you if you're doing it or you're sitting on the floor. Just get comfortable. Amber said, I do the same. Oh, I love dry. I just love taking scenic routes. I love looking at fancy houses too. She said, I will take a scenic route to places so I have a minute to get my head straight. Yeah. No, you don't have to be in the lotus position. Um, I don't do that very often unless I'm in a class, like teaching a class doing that. However, I sit in my bed because I have a lot of lower back pain. So I put pillows behind my back and I just sit in my bed and have my legs out. Sometimes I lay down. Sometimes legit, y'all, when I'm at work and it's stressful, I go to the restroom and I just sit there on the toilet, not pooping or anything, <laughs> but I'm just sitting in there to have some peace, right? It's called a restroom. You might as well rest in it. So yeah, it doesn't have to be Lotus, um, but that's just the most popular one. But either way, just get to where you stretch first. I personally think that you get the most benefits by closing your eyes um, because it allows less distractions. However, there are times and places that you can meditate with your eyes wide open. But when you close your eyes, um, one of the, a great little tip that I do when I teach a meditation class, is I give each lady, <laughs> Tamika's laughing over here, I give each lady a scarf and I put lemongrass essential oils on it, eucalyptus, lavender, whatever, cucumbers sometimes, you know, you can get like a wet washcloth and have it cool and put maybe some cucumber oil or something on it, olive vera. And anyways, you just put Put that on your eyes so that you're not trying to see what's going on around you. And some people believe that when you do that, it also sharpens your awareness in your third eye. So I like to have a blind, not a blindfold. <laughs> we ain't doing 50 shades of gray up in here. Um, but just have something over my eyes to help me focus. So that's another good tip. Um, and just try to focus on breathing. If you focus on breathing, because a lot of people are worried about doing meditation because they're afraid their mind's going to go 70 different directions and they're not going to be able to do it. However, there's nothing wrong with that. And if your mind is going 70 directions, it's telling you that that's how you are all day. You just don't slow down and realize it. And if you are going in that many directions, you really need to be doing at least five minutes of meditation a day. So people that worry, though, about that happening over and over and over and all these voices and they don't want to hear all that, um, the, if you just focus on breathing, that will help you stay on course. I encourage when you first start meditating, one of the best things you can do is just say, I'm going to start for five minutes a day, no exceptions. 
Even if that means I have to take a little bit longer route home, I am worth five minutes a day. I give all these other things five minutes a day. Sally Walker's uh, Facebook post that I haven't seen since I was 12. I give her five minutes a day. <laughs> you know, all these things. I see the giraffe video giving birth on YouTube. I give that five minutes a day. Making sure that you also give yourself the same amount of time as these things. And not to be rude, they really don't matter. But you do. So, and, um... That's just a, a good tip is to start with five minutes. Set that timer for five minutes. If you still feel the spirit and you're, and you're doing great, set it for five more, right? Um, and then what I say is then after you do that week for five minutes, then you do 10. And then the next week you do, you know, you do 15 and 20. Kim said, that's how I'm starting five minutes. So some, some of the most um, powerful novelists and speakers that I have ever encountered, they say that they started and sometimes still only do five minutes. It's just being mindful, right? It's allowing your mind to, to release, to take a spiritual dump. <laughs> so um, there are all forms, all kinds of different forms of um, meditation. And so I'd love to hear your guys' favorite in the comments. Kim was talking about she likes to do, do just basic uh, breathing. And that's what I, one of my favorites is too. Some people use what are called mantras. And mantras are a phrase that you, sometimes they're in English, sometimes they're in other languages. Um, a lot of times in Sanskrit. But you repeat this mantra over and over and over and over and over. And sometimes people do that also with affirmations. Some people also do um, chanting meditation, which I have done numerous times, and I will say it's really powerful. I, however, I had, I'm the type of person, I'm a researcher, so I had to research all the words I was chanting to make sure I'm not chanting like, oh, turn someone into a cow and a sheep. <laughs> oh, Tina Turner does mantras. Shoot, I'm going to start doing that so I can get her legs. But yeah, so rolling, but so that's what you're going to, I mean, that's another way that you can do is you can do mantras. Chanting, that's what I was talking about. Chanting is really powerful. What chanting does is, and I think we're having a lady come on a little bit and talk about chakras, so she'll get more into this. But your throat chakra is one of your most beautiful chakras because it holds so much power. It's your voice, right? It's your voice. It allows you to speak your truth. It allows you to speak what direction and purpose that you want in your life. It allows you to say, you know, beautiful things to others. It's just powerful. And a lot of times we swallow words that we don't say, that we want to say, but we don't say, and we hold back. And a lot of times as a child or sometime in our life, we stop talking and expressing what we wanted. Instead, we stop, we start to say all the things we don't want. And when you do a chanting meditation, you almost create like a little healing, like a little massage for your throat because it's all centered around specific vibrations for healing. So when they do, when people chant and they do the word, um, actually let's all practice and do that together. I had my girls do this the other day in my group. So I want you to just kind of sit where you're sitting right in front of me. Take that deep breath in through your nose and then out through your mouth. And then this time, providing you're not like in the middle of somewhere public and everybody's going to turn around and look at you crazy, but even then that might be kind of fun. Just do this with me. So we're going to, um, we're going to, it's the O-M is how it's spelled. We're just going to say this together and feel it tingle. Feel your face tingle. Feel your throat tingle. Okay, ready? Um... Keeping those lips closed, let's try it again. Um. Did you guys feel that? Did you feel the vibration? I feel like Marky Mark, but did you? So it's just a very beautiful way to meditate is doing chanting. Um, another one is using music. I like to meditate using spa music, anything on YouTube. And I make sure that when I search on YouTube, that I type in spa music. Hi, Sunette. How are you? Hi, Tamika. 
So I type in, um, when I do that, I type in uh, spa or meditation music with no ads. And the reason I do that is because there's nothing like meditating and getting really into it. And the creator and I are one and we're like, hey, what's up, Leah? Hey, God, how you doing? And then all of a sudden it says for $19.99, if you, you know, if you click now, you can get two face creams. <laughs> so when you do the YouTube meditation, just type in no ads. Um, Alexa, my Alexa app or my Alexa little echo dot, she is incredible because she has all kinds of guided meditations. You can ask her which one you want. I also really love shamanic journeying. It's Native American music and the vibrations of the drums all have very specific things that it's doing to your body. So that's another great one. Um, Tamika said the Calm app. Yeah, Calm app is great. There's an app for everything, right? I mean, hello, we got farmersonly.com. There's an app for everything. So <laughs> sugardaddy.com. So there is, you know, an app for you about uh, meditating for sure. So you just find what's a good fit for you. So music is the one that you can do. Guided meditation is one of my other favorites. You can do guided meditations. Let's say that you're trying to get land a new job. And you know that you have some inner fears about starting over and you don't know what to do, but you know you need to meditate. Well, then spend your five minutes in YouTube, type in five meditation, five minute medita guided meditation for letting go of fear. And then just let that five minute meditation do the work. Um, so there's guided meditations. I actually have a ton of those on my YouTube video. And then when I'm done, I'll also put a link to one of my favorite guided meditations that you guys can have for free. Um, breathing meditation, like Kim stated earlier, that's one of my favorite meditations where you just simply focus on your breath. There's Kundalini, which is like a breath of fire. So those breaths are very specific breathing. You, um, A lot of times you go in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. You go really fast. And that is because like um, who the speaker is going to talk about later, about chakras, that is, you're almost sending a shock wave. You know, you guys know when someone is, um, when they have like flatlined or, or they're not coherent and they put those little pads on them, right? To wake up their heart and to wake up, to wake that person up again, right? That is very much what like Kundalini does because of those breaths. It wakes up that chakra system and it really creates a very beautiful cleansing all throughout your body. Oh, thank you, ladies. So Kundalini is a great one. I know I keep talking about YouTube and I could should be like, just call me, y'all. But I'm telling you, YouTube has a ton of free stuff and they have great um, beginners Kundalini meditations on there too. So check that out. Concentration meditation is another really good one. Um, I noticed that as I've gotten older, I have a really hard time focusing on something that honestly, let's be real, is boring. <laughs> um, or just even sometimes I'll feel awful. Someone will be talking to me. And then before I know it, I just can't focus more than a few minutes on the conversation. My mind's going here, my mind's going there. And that's when I know I really need to do meditation. So during that time, I might focus on doing some concentration meditation, and those are on YouTube too. And that's simply where either the presenter of that meditation or just you is going to figure out a specific thing. Everybody said, me too, right? A specific thing to concentrate on for that length of your meditation. So you'll spend that five minutes literally concentrating on one object or one particular situ situation to gain clarity and to also gain focus on that. So that's another really good one. Um, and that also helps people that struggle with ADD. Um, so that's another good one too. And then mindfulness meditation. Yeah, concentration meditation is awesome, Tamika. Check it out and let me know what you think. Go on YouTube, girl. Go on YouTube. Um, mindfulness meditation. And that one is observing your thoughts where you just sit there and you're not focusing on your breathing or anything else. You're just letting your mind wander. And because a lot of times when your mind is wandering, God is trying to show you where you're really at like 80% of your day. It's where you're wandering to. 
And so sometimes your mind just needs permission to wonder. And then when you're done with that meditation, then go ahead and write down um, what it is that you're going, you know, what came up for you and see if it's something that came up like three or four times, because that's spirit's way of saying, I'm showing you this because this is, this is an area you really need to work on in your life. We talked about mantra meditation, which is repeating one word over and over again to really allow your body to feel those vibrations. And that vibration is allowed to really, um, take over certain areas in your body to allow an awakening in your mind and your spirit. Um, and it's really calming. Anxiety, there are incredible meditations centered around anxiety. And a lot of people credit and say that when you have anxiety, it's because your mind is going so many different directions. So if you start doing that five-minute meditation, um, you will notice that that anxiety is going to lower a lot. When we were first talking about uh, this morning, some of the benefits, that's one of my favorite ones that come up because it's something I struggle with too, especially being in public. Um, being an empath and being a healer, I can pick up on energy so fast that some days my anxiety goes through the roof because I'm feeling so much. So anxiety is also another way of your body communicating with you. And that would be really beneficial to do those five minute meditations. Get on YouTube and find some for anxiety too. And do some work on digging where that anxiety for that day is coming from. Because I guarantee you there's a meditation created. Somebody did for free <laughs> for you to do centered around whatever that issue is that comes up. So, um, Another trick or another little activity we're going to do real quick and then we'll move on and I'll teach you guys that pocket meditation. So what we were talking about earlier, how we con sometimes we struggle with concentrating. A lot of times it's because our mind is going somewhere and we just want it to just stop, right? So what I want to do right now is I want to show you where our minds are going. Now, a person that meditates every day regularly, their mind is not going to go for what ours does if we don't uh, meditate all the time. So this simple exercise that we're gonna do is I'm gonna just, we're gonna take about three to five seconds here. And I want you to allow your mind to just go wherever it goes, okay? And then when we're done, I'm gonna tell you the next part. So just let that bad boy run. Go ahead and start. Okay, now we're going to stop there. So I'm going to tell you the second part of this in just a minute. So what do you think that we do the majority of our days, you guys? What do you think that we do? As women, what most of us do is we spend it thinking and overthinking. And it's compulsive and we can't even stop it and we don't know why. All of us do it. Or so it seems like we can't stop it, right? So, um, it's addictive. Overthinking is really addictive and we don't even want, we don't even want to do it. Um, and so a lot of times what happens is it creates this suffering without us realizing it because these are things coming up that we don't want to think about. So that exercise we just did, typically you would do this at your house and you would do this for five minutes. You would allow your mind to just go and then you would write on the piece of paper, um, the things that came up for you. And then you would dissect it. Did more things come up for me that my mind went to that was automatically negative? Or did more things come up to me that were positive? So when you guys had that few seconds to think and your mind went somewhere, did it automatically go for something positive or something negative? Be truthful, y'all. Mm hmm Exactly, Kim. So I will be honest that before I started meditating all the time and the times that I am slacking, I notice my mind automatically reaches for the negative. So it is so important that 
when you become a regular meditator, I didn't say that first, you'll see that that stops. And it's so important that we allow those negative places somewhere to go since we're spending most of our time all day thinking like we just discovered that we want at least to, it to be things that we're thinking that are positive. So yeah, Kim said negative because it's, it's real life. So, um, there was something else I was going to say. So yeah, so meditation helps with that. It allows you to be able to have those negative thoughts, have somewhere to go and honor them and give them space. So, um, what you think about you guys is what we become. We all know that Kim teaches that all the time, the powerful power of manifestation and your thoughts are manifesting things for you every day. And we want them to be manifesting positive things. So we want it to be when we think that we think positive and meditation allows us to do that um, because it allows us to decrease the amount of thoughts that we have. Yeah. And a lot of people do. Tamika, it goes to work because it's also what's consuming our thoughts, right? Is but a lot of times it's also not flooding our spirit. Yeah, exactly. Tamika. Hi D. Thanks for joining us. Um, so it helps us decrease that amount of thoughts and it also helps um, the speed of which those thoughts come to our mind, which is great for limiting beliefs because now it gives us more time and more power to switch that thought and it allows us to even have brief moments where we're not thinking, which is crazy because we think so much. We're like, yeah, right, Leah, but just see, just see. All right, ladies. So I know it's Saturday, we all got things to do. So let's go ahead and we're gonna learn a really quick pocket meditation. And this is what my friend Ro Ferrelli taught me. I'm not quite sure where she learned it, but I love it. So the pocket meditation, like I said in the beginning, it can be done anywhere. You can do this at work if you're having a stressful day. So to make it. <laughs> when you're at work, boo, you can go into the restroom and you can do this. Um, because it's super quick and no one will hear you and it's just super fast. You can do this in the car, whatever. So we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to take three deep body breaths. We're going to start breathing in through our nose and breathe out through our mouth. Ready? In, out, in, out, in, out. Go ahead if you can and put your feet flat on the floor. And if you can, put your palms up on your knees or on your lap. And what you're going to do is when we count, so I mean, when we breathe in, you're going to count in your mind to the number one. So you're going to breathe in and think of the number one. And you can even take your finger and go like this. So what we're doing is we're allowing our brain to have something to focus on while our soul is relaxing. So I'm just going to tell you this before you do it. So you're going to breathe in and you're going to imagine the number one and you just go. And then when you breathe out, you're going to imagine the number two. In. Three. Out. Four. You can go all the way up to ten. And you can just keep going. Sometimes you get so into the meditation that you forget the numbers. Just start over. Sometimes you get so into it, you go to 50. But it's just a simple thing to allow your mind to focus on the numbers, like I said, so your soul can focus on doing its work. And it's okay if you're doing this and you're laying down um, when you start doing this on your own and you fall asleep because you will wake up feeling very rested. A lot of people think if they fall asleep during meditation that it's not okay, but I have some, I have attended some of the most beautiful meditation retreats that I have slept almost the entire time and felt so awakened. Your spirit is still working. Your, your, um, unconsciousness and your consciousness is still working when you'll sleep, when you're sleeping. And you guys will learn that from my dear friend, Jen, when she talks about, uh, dream planting, because you do, you, you are thinking, I mean, when you're sleeping, you're still thinking. So anyway, enough about that. So you guys still got your feet on the floor? And those palms up. All right. So we're going to breathe in. Imagine the number one. Breathe out. Imagine the number two. In. Out. 
in number five, out number six, in number seven, out number eight, in number nine, out number 10. See how quick that was and see how easy that would be to teach a child. So you can go as slow and as fast as you want, and it's just a simple one that anybody can repeat because it's really simple. You're literally just counting. So that's what I want you guys to keep in your pocket that you can use as much as you want. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if that day you only get through number five. The fact of the matter is you gave yourself five seconds. And oftentimes as women, you guys, especially entrepreneurs and powerful women like everyone in this group, we don't even give ourselves five seconds. I do those sometimes before I go into the store or if I know it's been a difficult time with my son, before I respond, I just do that simple breathing, right? Kim said, I didn't want to, oh, Kim said, that did me good. Tamika said, I don't, didn't want to open my eyes to move. <laughs> It's just, a, it's just a beautiful one. It's so easy. And it, that was 10 seconds, you guys. Imagine if you did that for five minutes, how much lighter you would feel, how much zen you would feel, and how much a better person you would be. I know when my bitch is coming in that I need to breathe and count to 10, literally, because my inner bitch means something in me is off balance. Tanika said, I feel so much lighter, even that quick. Yeah. Imagine if you did that every single day, every single day. So the important thing with spiritual work is that you just start. There's going to be 50,000 things that are going to come up that are going to tell you not to because it's your limiting beliefs. But those things are going to keep you limited and also keep you limited to receiving and hearing those messages of the great divine. So it is so important that when you're working on talking to God, this is a beautiful way to talk to God. You can do this and then pray or do or pray and then do this 10 seconds. And I promise you that you're going to feel and hear some messages from God. You can even do this in the shower, you guys. When you're first doing spiritual work, you're going to feel overwhelmed because there's going to be so many people telling you what worked for them. But they're telling you that because that worked for them. Find what works for you. Spirituality is like a sexy sandwich. It really is. Think about like an amazing sandwich, okay? So I'm, I'm picturing like a club sandwich. And in that club sandwich, if I have the bread, that can be prayer. If I have another piece of bread, that can be um, meditation. Another piece of the bacon could be uh, journaling. And then another, you know, the tomato could be um, listening to spiritual authors. So spirituality is very much like that sexy sandwich because it is often done the best and the most effective when it's numerous things that you're doing to work for the greater good of you and not just, you know, not just depending on that one thing to be the fix all. So just find what works best for you. And I hope you guys have had a great time today. Um, hi, Bianca, of you know coming in and just finding something that may work for you. I'm excited to hear what form of meditation you guys are going to try. We heard some people say concentration, some said mantra, like Miss Tina Turner. And then we've got this simple um, pocket meditation that some people are going to repeat. So I am really excited to see which one works for you. Just give it five minutes for a week and see how much more zen, hi Dell, how much more zen you feel. Um, so anyways, if you guys are interested in learning any more about that, just let me know. I will also provide later on some of my favorite guided meditations I've created just as a thank you gift for coming today. And I hope they heal your spirit as much as they did mine. And also, um, if you ever want to join our group, The Soulful Goddess, it, we would love to have you. It's made up of fabulous women like Kim and myself, and um, it's centered around just becoming your highest self spiritually and just lots of good knowledge to add to that sexy spiritual sandwich. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, you have a fantastic rest of your Sunday, and I'm so excited, Kim, to see the rest of these amazing speakers. You have a great showcase of a spiritual summit today. 
Kim said, I'm going to start with mantra. Yeah, perfect. Oh, and your altar, that's beautiful. If you ever want me to come on and teach how to make an altar, I'd love to do that too. That's beautiful, Kim. All right, ladies. Will you have a great day? This was so much fun. Thank you, Kim. Oh, thank you so much. She said, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed you being here. All right, ladies, have a great Saturday. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.